Today we're going to learn how to create AHL7 database in less than 15 minutes using the Ultraport HL7 SQL Schema Engine. This software is incredibly easy to use and we're going to get started with it right now. With step one, we need to download and install the software. Now to download it is really pretty easy. We just go open up our web browser, go to our website, hermitechnz.com, go to downloads, and download the 32-bit or 64-bit version of the schema engine. Now, once you install it, it will put a shortcut on your desktop. It looks like this. And that's as easy as that is. We've completed step one. Now, for step two, we want to create an empty SQL database for testing. Now, this can also be an existing database that you uh, play in for your own development work, because you can put our tables inside of your own database as well. But there's nothing special to this. I could just right click and say I want a new database and then click through it. I've already created an empty database called HL7 Testing. And there, step two, done. Now we're going to go on to step three, activating the SQL Schema Engine software. We've downloaded it, we've installed it, and now we have to actually activate it. So I double click on the icon, start it up. When you get in at first, you're going to get to the end user license agreement. This is boilerplate, just like any other end user license agreement. I'll click continue. We have online activation. We also have manual activation. That's if you're trying to activate on a server that's not connected to the internet. You can refer to the online help. We're going to use online activation. I'm going to say I've already purchased a license because I have one. I'm going to say yes, this is the first time that this product has been installed on this computer. And now I put in my Hermitech account information. You'll know what this is. You have to register and create an account before you can download the, the schema engine or before you purchase it. So you'll know what this user ID and password is. The identifying comment, we have customers that have hundreds and hundreds of these. So this is something that identifies this particular installation to you in case you need support or help with it. And we click activate pulls up. Here are my licenses. I own two. I've already activated one. When I click activate, it's going to tell me I were about to use up your last license. Are you sure? I say yes, and our license has been activated. Now we're ready to go. All right, so we've activated our software. Now we need to create a SQL schema engine profile and the schema tables. You do all of that from right here under MS SQL Schemas. If you're using MySQL, you'd click on MySQL Schemas on the left-hand toolbar. This first, pre this first field prefix is a two to four character alpha prefix. What we're going to do is we're going to create a bunch of tables and objects. We're going to, all of them will be prefaced with the prefix AAA underscore because I said AAA in the prefix. We give our profile a name and now we need to choose the HL7 version or vendor definition. Now this is kind of a trick question. We'll go into it in future videos, but people ask what's the right one of these to select and really the answer is none of them. You're going to create your own. But we're just testing so we'll stay with that. Now I need the SQL Server name, database name, and connection information. One easy way to get this is just go to Management Studio, right click on the connection, and go to Properties and it should pull up and I'll get something nice that I can just swipe and copy. I plug that into my server name. Now my database name is HL7 Testing. And next I have to choose what kind of authentication am I going to use? SQL Server authentication or the trusted authentication? You want to use SQL Server if you can. There's a reason not to use the Windows logon. It's in the help. It has to do with running it as a service. Uh, but I'll put in my SQL user ID and password. I've already created this account. 
You can store this HL7 segment data in the message manifest table. Look at the help on this. You probably don't need it. Now we're ready to test our connection. We do. We were able to connect successfully. Do you want to perform a table validation? We say yes. It's going to give us an error. There were no schema tables detected. It tells us what we need to do. Click validate schema. And there's the validate schema button. We click it. it takes us into database utilities. We click the create the schema tables. It tells us we're about to create these tables. They're going to be dropped if they already exist. It's executing. And we got no error. So if we close this window, we should see two green checks. And if we click our test button again, this time it should come back and tell us there are no errors. All right, save our changes and we're done. We've created our SQL schema profile and created the schema tables. So we're ready now to populate them. To populate, we go to step five. We need to create an inbound processor. Before that, let's look at the tables that we created. You can see they all start with uh, AAA and there's a whole bunch of them. Don't let the number of tables that you see daunt you. Just, a lot of people will go their entire career and only deal with a dozen of these tables. There's a lot of empty space in HL7. Your main table, there's no records in it now. We're going to consume some messages with an inbound processor. You just give it a name here and you select which schema you're going to populate. You select which Windows service you want to run in. We give you four. Always check for duplicate messages. Make sure that's checked. You can run a store procedure after importing. Refer to the online help for this. We're not going to go over it in today's thing. Now we want to choose the folder where we're going to pick up these HL7 messages. So I'm going to choose to SQL. And the data file extension is HL7. So we want in that folder HL7 messages to appear and our inbound processor will consume them into our schema. So we've created our inbound processor profile. That's done. Our next steps are to test it. And we're going to test it two different ways. We're going to test it running as a service and we're going to test it running locally. First we're going to test it running locally. When it runs locally that means it's going to run in an immediate window so we can actually watch it. That also means it's running as us, whomever we're logged in to Windows as. When you install the Windows services it runs in a different memory space. So in the immediate window we click the start button and it is working. As you can see it says oh there's no files in our folder. It's okay I have my Ultraport HL7 notepad up with 288 messages in it. I'm going to quickly export those to a folder with a file extension of HL7 and it's done. Let's open the folder and take a look. There they are. If we go over to our schema engine we should see this inbound processor start to pick those messages up and it does. Now this thing is blazingly fast. It can load even on an underpowered machine, standard HL7 messages, 40,000 an hour into the, into the database. But it is, uh, it is a tugboat. It's not a speedboat. So if you need a solution that's going to load, you know, a million messages a day into the database, you might want to look at doing something custom. Contact us about that. So there it is. It's done. We imported 288 messages into our database. Now, <clears throat> we want to test it again, but this time we're going to test it as a Windows service. So we click Install Windows Services. It says now they're installed, but they're not running. If we open the services, scroll down to the Use for Ultraport, we should see it. There it is, the Ultraport Schema Instance 1 and, and Schema Maintenance. So we're ready to go. We start these. Now, right now, remember, there's nothing out there in our folder, so we're going to export these again. Here in the notepad, I'm going to do a little trick because we don't want to import the same messages. So I'm going to change them by running a script that basically 
just anonymizes HL7 messages, puts random information into the fields. There it is. Now I have 288 different messages. I'm going to export those to a folder and it's done and we open it up and there's our messages and we should see these start to disappear. Yes, there they go. You can see them dropping down again. It's really, really fast. So there it is. Let's open a schema browser from the tools menu just to go look at it real quick. We're going to browse our profile. Uncheck filter by date message loaded. So we want to look at inbound only and execute. And there's our 563 HL7 messages. And that's it. We've tested it running locally. We've tested it running as a Windows service. We're completely done. And we've created a full HL7 database and tested it twice, imported over 500 messages in less than 15 minutes.